Hello, this is Dr. Oviedo. Today, I want to discuss mechanisms of infection and disease for COVID-19. You will recall that COVID-19 can be transmitted by droplets and airborne. Here I've drawn a nose because for today's example, I'm going to use airborne transmission into the nose. This drawing represents the lining of the respiratory tract. Here on the left, this represents the upper respiratory tract, which is basically the nose, the sinuses, and the nasopharynx. This is lined by respiratory epithelium, and I've shown that as ciliated cells in this drawing. Here on the right, these cells represent the lower respiratory tract, or the lungs. The alveoli, which are the small air sacs in the lung where oxygen absorption occurs, are lined by type 1 pneumocytes and type 2 pneumocytes. I've drawn a picture of the lungs over here to remind you that that lining represents the alveoli in the lungs. Here I've drawn a few viruses to represent airborne transmission. Someone who is infected with COVID-19 has coughed and then another person is breathing in particles containing those viruses. Let's see what happens. I've shown some of the viruses to enter the nose and infect the upper respiratory tract and some of them to enter the nose and infect the lower respiratory tract. For now, I want to focus a bit on the left, which is the upper respiratory tract. I'm going to take a look at what happens in this cell on the next slide. Here I've drawn it much larger. You can see it has these green little objects, which are receptors for the COVID-19 virus. Here's our virus. And here, unfortunately, is what happens when someone is going to be infected with the virus. Here I've drawn the receptor for COVID-19, which is known as ACE2, much larger. ACE2 stands for angiotensin converting enzyme 2. This is the receptor, of course, that the COVID-19 virus binds in order to enter these cells. In normal situations, the body uses this receptor to control physiologic processes such as blood pressure. However, the virus, of course, uses it for its own purposes in order to infect the cell. I've shown that here with the virus entering our respiratory cell. Once it's inside the cell, it can use all the resources of that cell in order to make more viruses. Once these viruses are made, in addition to damaging and killing that particular cell, it can also come out back into the air, back out someone's mouth or nose into the environment to infect another person. In addition, I've drawn another respiratory cell right here to show this virus can of course infect all the surrounding respiratory cells and then it can also replicate in the other cells. This of course can go on and on and make someone quite sick. Let's go back to our original drawing. I just shown what happens up close when the upper respiratory tract is infected. One of the manifestations of upper respiratory tract, of course, would be sinusitis. I want to focus now what happens when the infection occurs in the lungs. When the body is fighting the virus, it causes a lot of inflammatory processes and brings fluid in the places where these inflammatory processes are taking place. I've shown this fluid by this big blue blob in the lungs. You remember, these cells are lining the alveoli, which is where air exchange occurs. This fluid will block the air exchange. I've shown this down here as fluid filling up the lungs. This, of course, is very scary. We call this viral pneumonia when it results from the infection of the virus. Some patients get such a massive inflammatory response toward the virus that they get acute respiratory distress syndrome. This is considered a complication where the body is putting such a strong fight against the virus that it causes a lot of fluid to enter the lungs and the lungs have difficulty with air exchange. When this gets very severe, patients can be admitted to the intensive care unit for ventilation in attempt to help the air exchange as they continue to fight the virus. If this is unsuccessful, of course, someone can die. 
Now that we've discussed these processes in the airway, I want to go on to discuss some other processes. We just finished discussing local infection, which is infection of the upper respiratory tract, for example, sinusitis, and infection of the lower respiratory tract, which is the alveoli in the lungs. In the lungs, you can get viral pneumonia, and you can also get acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is a serious complication of viral pneumonia. Other sites which can also get infected include the heart, for example, myocarditis. This probably occurs when the local infections, such as the upper respiratory tract or lower respiratory tract, get more severe and the virus can enter the blood. That, of course, is how it would be able to access the heart and cause a myocarditis. The virus may also infect the lining of the eyes, which is called conjunctivitis, and the patients may have a very pink appearance of the whites of the eyes if this occurs. You may get infection of the olfactory epithelium. The olfactory epithelium is located high up in the nose and is the place where smell occurs. When patients get infection and this portion is damaged, patients can have loss of smell and taste. You can also have infection of the gastrointestinal epithelium and these patients may have diarrhea. This is also important to know because if a patient has a COVID-19 associated diarrhea, they may pass the infection on to other people through the diarrhea. You can also get a systemic inflammatory response. This is when the infectious processes release factors into the blood and this can have effects on blood pressure and other processes needed to maintain life. Patients can also have cardiovascular complications. For example, some patients have underlying conditions and they don't have the reserves to respond to the cardiovascular stress of a COVID-19 infection. The references that I have used for today's presentation include a New England Journal of Medicine article from March 30th, 2020, a Journal of Virology article from April 2020, and a JAMA cardiology paper from March 27, 2020. Please read these articles if you would like more detailed information about the things I have discussed today. Okay, that's it. Please do whatever you can to stay safe and stay healthy.